Just one sec. Ten people on. Hi, everybody. Give us just wow. a second to find ourselves. Will it pop up over here? What? Yeah, it should. Okay. We can see y'all on YouTube. I'm just trying to get you on Facebook. There we go. There we go. I gotta make sure the volume's turned See down. You on Whoops! <laughs> oh, it's always such a so many cameras, so many um, websites, so many updating things this morning on Stampin' Up. Let me raise my chair up a little bit. There, there we go. So I have stuff. Chris, I have stuff. Hi, Mary. Um, so we have lots of stuff to show you. So, if first off, if you don't have a catalog, then you can go to either one of our um, websites and we will be happy to send you one. So, I think first what we'll do is if there's anything anybody wants to see. Oh, I hate when it does that because... The auto captions. <laughs> the auto captions. It doesn't understand me. I must not enunciate very well. Because sometimes the words it comes up with, I'm like, yeah, I'm not sure where you got that. TV does that too. So, let's go with... I think I'll stamp cards. My, I have a bunch of stuff. I have a, the two cards to finish my four season series that I did yesterday. And then I have um, a fall, a Thanksgiving, and a Halloween that are the same thing, but I'll show you two different ways. And then I have a Christmas. So I'm going to cover all the holidays. And then she has a some fall. fun generic. Very generic ones. <laughs> one to do. So, I think that I will show you. First, I'll show you a couple of things that yeah, these ones we too. have. Yeah. That we've done. Did you bring any of your cards that you've done? Yes. So, we'll show you some of those first. Let me. Oh, I guess we can do it this direction. Oh, I don't know where my cup is for this. So, a couple of things that you haven't seen, unless you've caught me live someplace else. One is this little box. So, these are, are the paper pumpkin boxes that are in the annual catalog, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I just made a 3D bow. I love this bow. So because I put several layers, like it won't smash or anything. Um, so it's a fun size box. It's, if you get paper pumpkin, it is literally the same shape. It's just a miniature one. And then this paper, I can open the catalog now because I don't know the names of anything. This paper is really fun. It is foils. You can see it's foily. So it's green and red foil. Um, and it's kind of newsprinty. I'll show it to you in a minute. Hi, Christine. Hi, Kate. We got a bunch over here on YouTube. She's got my YouTube stuff over there. Hi, hi guys. Hi, Linda. I saw your order. Hi, Rebecca, Stephanie. We have lots of people. Yeah. Hi, Terry. And Jackie. I, yeah, I can't. My, um, and Linda. <laughs> my bifocals don't reach quite that far. So this is one that you might not have seen. And at some point, I will do a little YouTube for it. So I don't know if Peggy's on. I know that Terry and um, Kate are because I saw their names. So she asked a question. And then I asked it on our Stampin' Up! Leaders board. And it generated quite the lively discussion on whether or not we could bake in the little coffee cups. They're not little. They're not miniature ones. Hi, Ingrid. Um, that... Would a standard size card fit in this? No. You would have to make a skinny one. Make a skinny one. It's almost the right size, but it's more of a rec Flip more rectangle. <laughs> yeah, That's it's just a little bit off. too big. But you could make customized ones um, for it. It would be kind of fun. So Peggy asked me if we could bake in the cups. So I asked on the leader's board, and there was all kinds of 
I think that you could, and Susan and I have decided that we might try it. People were afraid we'd light our um, ovens on fire, but lots of people cook in those little, bake in the little Starbucks mini cups. Whether or not it's super healthy for you, that we don't know. So we tried to ascertain that. So I wanted to come up with something to help Peggy because she wanted to put muffins in her little carrier. So that's one of the things that we're going to do. So you'll see that in a little bit. Then this is a card that my friend Tanya made. Actually, Super she's cute. got two. I don't know where is I put this, the other one. This one? No. No, she gave me the... Yeah, I've got a kind of a mess. I'll try to find it in a little bit. But this is using the plaid paper. And if you love the, black, the plaid paper, you might want to order it sooner rather than later because it is one of the things that they expect to go on back order. It'll come back eventually. And then here's one I did, and I used the exact same paper. So you may have seen that. And then this... This tree's been one of my favorite things out of the catalog so far. You show them one of yours. Which one? There's only five. Well, I don't care. You pick. Do your fall one. This is the one I'm going to make today. So I did, there is a fall bundle that looks just like the Artistry Blooms bundle. It's the same artwork and same style of dyes. So I did this with it. It uses the stamps and the dyes. I really like it. I can't tell if, if you can see that it's sparkly, but I painted all of this with Winter Stella. I like the color combination that she chose. I've been doing outfit inspiration. Whatever I'm wearing <laughs> that day is what colors I use when I stamp. And we did not talk about what we were going to yeah. wear today, but we both we have on. Much. We're Misty fans Moonlight. of Misty Moonlight today. I bought Misty Moonlight <laughs> leggings just so I could stamp with it. So we're kind of matchy-matchy. I might have, oops, I might have the same stack of stuff here. And then a couple more with the bow, or this, I I know I have more than one, because I have a Christmas one. Yeah, I have the wrong stack of stuff. I have my extras. Um, but this is one, and I used the I Christmas bow, but I made it be not Christmas. So it's got to be over there. I'll find them in a minute. I've got more stuff. And then my one of the very first thing I think I made, so you might have seen this, is the gnomes, but I didn't want it to be Christmas. I wanted to be able to use it all year round. So this is also the celebration dies. I'm going to use those today. So he gets his little sprigs. The sprigs are from the celebration dies. The sequins, I covered up the Christmas lights, and I just made it be, if you're my age and you used to go camping with your families in the 70s, then you know, and maybe people still do because we don't camp, but they hung the big ball things outside the, your camper. So here's the new sequins. So Which I've used I've these used a couple of times. Of yes, those, I've used that on both of these. They're super fun. They are huge, and I love them. I did a tacky Christmas cards that are like classic tacky, and I used a ton of sequins on them. It reminds of me of um, Christmas sweaters. Both yeah, of that's what I was yeah. going for was yeah. some tacky sweaters that are This is a fun set, cute. and I keep asking her if I can borrow it. Well, I brought it with me, so maybe you can. <laughs> yeah, it layers really nicely, and then this is from the movie saying set, and it also has the celebration styles because I love them. Which movie is that one from? Remember, I looked at that. I don't. That's I the only one that I don't know. need to go watch the movies, and then I'll remember. Let me look it up. And then here, if you you go from all season to what he was intended for, and this one's really hard to tell. It is the um, velvet paper. Although I will tell you, I had a little piece of it on my table, and you know, if you watch me very often, that my cats like to join me. And if your cats lay on the velvet paper, it's no longer not no longer usable, especially if you have a white cat. I guess we could call it some reindeer hair. That's but. what I thought. It's from the Grinch. I was pretty sure, but I wasn't positive. And then this is the one that I made for her Christmas. I mean, for, for her birthday, birthday card. Because her birthday's on the 4th, 5th of July. So. It's festive. It's an all-season set. It goes with the... Um, jar punch if you have that so it's a whole it's another set to coordinate with that mm -hmm. and I have one of the projects if you are in my Christmas prep class um, one of the projects we'll be doing on there is I will show you how to light some of this stuff up so I'm either gonna light this one up I may light the nativity star up or I may light the fireplace I ordered the fireplace this week so I don't have it yet but all of those you know when you put the little um just like fairy the one lights. little fairy light in your card. We'll do that in the Christmas prep class. So you'll see how to do that. Then another one with the tree. 
This was my first paper. one. Yeah, and the plaid paper. The plaid paper is super fun. It's got so many designs and so many mm -hmm. colors. And then some super sparkly ones. I know. I bought that paper and I still haven't used it. Yeah, this is the new balmy blue paper and it's all stamped on shimmery Shimmer. white. I bought it to go with these animals, but I didn't do the glitter with the animals yet. This is also, if you saw our first live, it's on there, but this is three of the sizes. There's one size bigger than this of the celebration dies, and then I think one or two sizes smaller, and then these are also the animals from the Menagerie mix-up, which I have about a million of them that I'm in the process of making. This is how many <laughs> I have left to cut out. I have cut out a stamp case of pieces so far. It's one of those ones that put um, them all together in theory. It either needs a die or if you're if you own a, a scan and cut, that would be a fabulous one to use for yes. that. <laughs> I was all about it and then I got about halfway through both sheets and I was really tired of cutting them out. So when you're cutting all the ears, are you doing them individually or leaving them whole? It. Oh yeah, I guess she, it's one of the things she's going to show us, so yeah. she can show us then. I'm going to stamp with this one in a little bit. It's going to look totally different than this one. So this one, if you love to color, if you're a fan of coloring, this is fun. If you're not a fan of coloring, you'll like my next one. And then I have my fun little pop-up. So this one, I like it says, this one's on me, Merry Christmas, with the little coffee cup. And then I made it so it popped oh, up. Do you though. want your coffee cup? It's already ready. I'm sure. Oh, no, that's the broken one. Oh, then I don't know where it is. Yeah, it before you, if you get the wraps... Watch my video before you mess up your, your cups by trying it the wrong way. Because I've already messed up a couple. So this is a fun little pop-up. Super simple. If you did the... A bunch of you did the pop-up that we, I did with the mirror cast. It's the exact same, exact same card. And then this one is all of the metallic papers. And it's from the other Christmas saying set. We have re two really good Christmas yeah. saying sets this year. That's... I have the movie one and you have like just the saying, yeah. right? And then I did grab that one. That's with the set that you like. Also using metallic paper. I wanted something simple. I don't know that I love it yet. I'm going to keep working on it. You could put some sequins on it. Yeah, but I already did sequins on all the other ones. We'll find something to stick on it as we look through. So I will show you one, one card. Plop them in. Also, if you don't buy these to store everything in, you should. I have a million of them, and they're everywhere. Most of them are stuffed with cards. This one is stuffed with random pieces of paper, and then I have a whole set of them. Actually, probably two sets that I have labeled, like, ribbon, DSP, extra stamps from all the paper pumpkins. Anything that I can fit in one of these gets stored in one of these, and I love them. But every time I come over here, I have one and it's full of cards. Here's these. These are those. The cards I created yesterday. Are these your bows? Yeah. Here's are more missing. bow stuff. This one's a Christmas card. This one is a super cute Christmas tag. I love this ribbon. It's got, oh, I dropped it. It's got this pattern on it. You can kind of, there you go. Now you can see it. So the cards super I made cute. yesterday are missing. Which ones did you make? Well, maybe I will stamp the two trees. Oh yeah, they're oh, right here. This is oh, what happens when you have so much pileys on the on your table. So the first thing I'm going to show you, because if you've been out shopping much during 2020, um, who goes shopping anymore, right? It's a it's Me, a thing of the day. thing of the past. Um, I was at TJ Maxx the other day, which is my favorite, one of my favorite stores, that Home Goods Marshalls. Um, but they were stocking the 4th of July stuff. Like literally making the display of 4th of July. So I guess they're going to try to pass it off as Labor Day. Close enough. Um, but then at the front, at the checkout, the thing up there was all um, graduation, Ray Dunn stuff. And it all said 2020 on it. So if a lot of the things that we may normally buy for Christmas... One of my friends works with somebody who's a manager at Lowe's, and she said that their Lowe's is expecting to be out of appliances by, like, September. Um, and then they don't know that they'll get any more into March. So every time we say, like, the plaid paper might be a little bit delayed, it's not going to be you don't have a refrigerator delayed. 
Um, so we've been thinking of things that you might want to make for Christmas gifts just to have some handy in case you can't buy anything. And especially for people who don't make cards, um, this would be a fun gift to give them. So yesterday on my video, I did, this is the Life is Beautiful set. Let me switch the camera down. Uh, get, get here. So where's my mouse? Right there. <laughs> My computer screen's all the way across the room. Oh, come on. There we go. This set. So this is the Life is Beautiful. And yesterday I did the fall and the summer sure. versions. So you can do all four seasons. So you could make somebody a set of cards. The sayings are nice and generic. I would probably add some happy birthdays to them. So I'm going to do the winter and the spring. Now, so I used this and then I used the new dry brush. So I, and on the Stamparatus. And the, the main reason I started with the Stamparatus was because this stamp is so large that if you get it, you're going to need the largest block. And a lot of people don't have the largest block. So if you're going to have to buy something, just go ahead and buy the Stamparatus. And then it makes using the dry brush a lot easier too. Let's get this in here. Find all my paper in my pileys. So I'm going to do the spring one on magenta and the winter one on the moonlight because I was just going with a theme of in colors. And then I just have a little bit of sticky right here. And it just holds this down. And I don't use my magnet all the time because it often interferes with where I want my stuff to be. And then you just kind of make sure that's going to go where you want it. So let's get all these stamps out. I moved everything out of the way so I'd be able to. And on the one I did yesterday, I did the spring, 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 winter, winter. We're going to use Highland Heather on both. Yesterday I did a couple of different colors. Hi, Susan. You can see if anybody... I can't even oh. see the YouTube people. We have lots of people. So here you go. I'm using an ink spot on this one because ink spots are great to use with your Stamparatus. And yesterday I two-toned this, but I'm not going to two-tone it on this one because this is going to be the spring, and I don't want that cinnamon in there. Yesterday I added cinnamon. So just kind of brush it on there. I have the foam mat in my Stamparatus that works well if you're using the photopolymer. And I don't know if you can see the, it's got such pretty definition, Here. this tree. Can I pick it up? Oh no, because it'll move it. Oh, never mind, that's going to show there. Oh, yes, you, well, we'll yes, show I you am. at the end. And then I'm going to take this thing off because I'm going to add the, doing spring. Right? Yes, mm -hmm. that's what I said. So for spring, yesterday I used leaves. You could use some leaves, but I'm going to use all these little things that are going to turn into flowers. So I'm going to start. I picked some spring colors. So I'm going to go Daffodil Delight. And yesterday I did some two tones. On today's cards, you don't have to because I'm just going to make this be a, a lovely, fun spring thing. But the nice thing is, is... That this stamp especially and the snowflakes you'll be able to use them just for backgrounds because look how pretty those dots are so now I've got some yellow flowers I know our spring trees don't go in all these colors but that's okay mine's going to and then I've got Highland Heather and I didn't clean them off because I'm going from light to dark and because I'm stamping it all the way off. So kind of fill this in. And then our magenta. And this one I'm not I'm not going to add as many cuz it's going to be a super bright color on top of it. Maybe one more over here. So 
and then you can see you just have pretty spring colors whoops this way it's so easy and but those dots how pretty would a card be just with the dots just in colors you don't even have to use them as any a kind of background so now I'm going to put on the dry brush and yesterday I, I used cinnamon mostly cinnamon I think that and cherry on the one no um the other red that looks like cherry uh, poppy it starts with an m merlot, merlot. <laughs> i need some wine so i'm going to drag this on here and this is gray granite i'm gonna, just going to use it on both of these i love that stamp i so, use it a lot and this one works really well for you to just drag the the color on because you want the stripes anyways so drag that on there and then i'm going to put in a piece of scrap paper because i don't want to cover up my whole tree and really where I want to take the ink off is right here in the middle. So I'm going to press right there. Now you can see it's taken off that part. So now when I stamp on this, I can just mostly go around the edges. And you can see this isn't fitting quite flat because this is a red rubber stamp. And then I have the foam pad in it. But for this particular technique, it works really well because it's not hitting that middle part. So here's our spring one. Now let's do the winter. So the stamp apparatus makes it easy. You just pop that off. We'll pop this one back on. And for the winter tree, I'm also going to, I'm going to do its stem in the gray granite. Oh, here we go. And you can always, since you have this, you can kind of tell on here where it's stamping. But the nice thing is with the stamp apparatus is you don't have to keep figuring it out. Like just double check. So for this one, I'm going to do its trunk and gray granite that would be the other thing that would be fun about giving these cards is that you could just try lots and lots of color combinations i'm marcella and then i'm going to take my soft suede and just kind of rub some on it so it's because you know a great if you live in the midwest or any place where all of the leaves disappear and it's literally just tree trunks in the winter. It's a little gray. So we have this. So now it's not quite as, it's got that two-tone effect to it. And then we've got some snowflakes. So for this one, for this one tree, you don't actually have leaves on it. So let's start with Seaside Spray. I'm stamping off again. So we have that. And then we'll do Highland Heather. And you want to make sure that you don't have all of your snowflakes going the same direction, which is easy to do because you're not thinking and you just start stamping. So just kind of spin the block around as you go. And then let's do our Misty Moonlight. There we go. And then some words. So for this one, this one says thinking of you. Let's do it in the Misty Moonlight. After she just shut it. Let's go there. And I was just kind of basing it on where I hit the, the blue snowflakes the first time around. You can stamp your words first on these. On the, this one. When I did the autumn one, I also added some leaves at the bottom if, if they'd fallen off the tree. Let's pop this off. Move that out of the way now. Just put it on the floor somewhere. <laughs> we have way too much stuff on my little table. Oops, wrong way. So 
So with this, I'm going to try it first without even re-inking it and see if I have enough still on there. And just a tad more. So again, just drag this over. There's also a birdhouse and Thank some um, dirt, which I'll add the, the ground back to these. This should be better now. Yep. yep. So now we have just a little bit of, but it's it. Because I have this mat in here, it's also not plunking down on there all the way. So that's a nice feature of that. So there's this little down my face. It's just a little piece of ground. And I am a fan of not having your stuff float on cards. So I love that they included this. Just add it there. And if you were if you were doing this, um, like if you were making gift sets, then do stuff like this where you do all the backgrounds at once and then you do, because you could just keep popping them back in there, but you could add all of these at the end. And then did I leave any more words out? I thought I did. Yep. So there's either a life is beautiful or a hello. So let's do life is beautiful because that's a good one for the fall. These? Yes. Which ones did I not show? I mean, I mean, I have two of a lot of them. I think probably just Tanya. That's one. So yeah. We'll put them back so let's just get later. with this. Life is beautiful. I wanted the life. Um, I mean, the life. You can tell what it says. So I made the is beautiful go off the trunk. I used this one already. So now we've got those. They're just pretty on. Hi, Luann. Hi, Marcella. I, um, there's more people. Oh, we've got Linda from Queensland. At least you guys aren't on total lockdown. If we still lived in Australia, we'd be on total lockdown because where we lived is. Um, so now I'm going to move this stuff out of the way. Okay. Put all that stuff in there. And then I'm going to use... I used the hippo dies on the other one, but let's see if the celebration dies might work. So I just wanted to add something that was a little funny. These, I mean, fun to it. This is the celebration label die. I'm going to use those in a little bit when I show you the muffin holder. So just put this on here. It just gives a little bit of easy dimension. those through and it gives you a fun way to put your ribbon on as well I, got that one. I have already ordered my new stampin stamp and cut and emboss I don't know I wish it had an easier name to remember what it was my new machine I ordered that this morning it will be here I didn't pay for overnight shipping because that was really the only thing that I needed so I got two days so I will show you it on Thursday Tomorrow I'm, I already have plans with my girlfriend, so there was no need to get it here tomorrow. So here we go. Let's do the magenta. I love this color. If you don't have it yet, it's a fun hot pink. Now my other two cards, I used dyed ribbon, tulle ribbon, because I had it in those colors. And because I have, my special this month was giving my dyed ribbon away in July. I was, I'm down to just those two colors. So for these cards, we're going to have to put some different ribbon. Do you have white? Yep. So this one I'm just going to do. Uh, well, that would be pretty too, though. Mix it with that blue one. Actually, this, that mixed with this on there. And then this mixed with. Yeah. Put this one with that okay. on there. So this is the... Snowflake Splendor Ribbon. And even though it's called Snowflake, you'll see on both these cards, we're going to do it on spring because it has, 
Like it picks up kind of the color that's laying on it. Hi, Tammy. I love that there's a spring stamp in here. I especially love that there's a spring stamp in here because I know when we get the, that's the August to December catalog for you girls in Australia or New Zealand. There's not a whole lot of spring. So this is. So I'm just going to put this around here and tie this. Yesterday I did it with the tool, which is a little bit easier of a ribbon to work with. This has a little bit, it's not wiry, but because of the sparkle in it. So you just want to put it there and then tie a knot. And then I'll do a bow. And then I'm going to pass it over to Carissa and let her finish the next step. You got it. So you can see it's kind of cattywampus, but we can flip all that around when we... So this just needs to be taped on with a stamp and seal. So just put your stamp and seal around and tape that on there. You take the stamp and seal. And then I will do, I think just this ribbon. I don't even think it needs the colored ribbon. I think it, cause it'll cover up the tree. Oh, I thought that one would be pretty with that cause it looks like snowflakes. Okay, let's do that one then. I thought this So this is the plain white tool. This is how I did them yesterday. Take a little bit more. And then double it over. And then just pull it here. This one's a little bit easier to tie than the, the snowflake one. because it's doubled you're gonna get a little bit more of a puffy bow but this ribbon's nice and see-through so just puff that out and then trim those off and then I'll let her put that one on there and then I need my dimensionals which may I may have to pull some out of over here oh that'll work so this is some that are almost gone and I like to use them all the way up. So I'm just going to cut them into little sections because you know who wants to throw this away because it's perfectly good dimensionals. So I'm going to use these straight bits and put them here and then pull these off. And I want to have it, um, thanks Sharon, I want to have it, the first time I made it, I did stick this on here and it was too close. You couldn't tell that it was cut out. So just do a double layer of dimensionals. Everybody that shares this um, on Facebook or on um YouTube will go into a drawing and these cards that I'm making now, somebody's going to win the set. I'll draw the names at the end of um, tomorrow from everybody that shared. You do have to have your page so I can tell that you shared or just tell me that you shared. So now just stick this back in just like a puzzle and don't plunk it down until you know it's matched up. The main thing is to get that trunk right there matched up. But now because it's the double layer, you can see that underneath. Then, oh, I do need the bucket back. And I'll let you do the next thing. I took it all the way across the room. <laughs> so stick these on here because I used the little in color enamel dots. So anytime you're making a set of something, because I went with the one color scheme, then I was able to get just these and it'll work for all the cards. So 
pull these off. And then add the second. This one um, would also be fun with another little spritz of shimmer, shimmer on it, yeah. Because it could look frosty. You can put a pink one just right there. So these are the in color dots. So yesterday I used the. Uh, you could do yellow. Mm, yeah. And on this one, you could even do the cinnamon, even though we didn't use cinnamon on the tree. Right here. Yep. And then just slide this one down underneath. And again, just make sure it's lined up before you press. And then once it is, you're going to put the blue one on there. Yeah. You took so you get the midnight. Moonlight. Moonlight. Did I say midnight? Mm -hmm. That's so gold This color. one's missing it because I didn't do it on my first two. So this one, you can see it has, it. Oh, has the birdhouse. You could add the birdhouse to all of them. It, the birdhouse actually would look pretty on this with some red birds, some cardinals on it. So there you go. How fun would that be? You could stamp the envelopes to match. And there is an, there is an envelope making set in the new catalog. So... Four cards. Yay. Now we'll let Carissa go. Oh, man. My takes <laughs> forever. Where is your paper cutter? The little one or the big well, one? The one with hanging from the big one. So I'm going to make the fall card I showed you guys earlier. I might not do all of it. I will do most of it because it does take a while. I'm doing my next one. Yeah. So I will start it and then start the coloring with you. And then color this while she is doing her next one. Just because it probably took me. I was also watching TV when I did it. But it did take me about a solid hour to color this. Just because I painted it instead of using markers. So I will make sure that it does not take that long with you guys. Or do you just want me to hand it to you and you can cut it? Um, this is already a card. Double check that it's a card back. And then this needs to be a card front. Scoot centered for a second. So for this, I am just going to take, I'm already dropping stuff, the giant block. I actually used my Stamparatus thing because it's also the right size for this. And I used my blocks for the painting rather than the actual purpose of them, which is stamping. I need to find my there it is. There's my fall set. So if you look at it this way, it's easier to tell not colored. Uh, it is the same type of artwork. Do you have the artistry blooms? Yes. I feel like they look, that's why I got them because I thought they looked the same and I thought it would be cool to try and combine the two. Um, let me move that out of the way. I think she's finding it for us. Let me get the stamp out. I also like all of the sayings. It's fun. Yeah. So to me, like they're not perfect, but I do think the artwork is extremely similar on the two of them. Don't you think they look alike? Yeah. Even like the extra like little pumpkins and leaves on this look like the flowers on that one. So that's why I got it. So I'm just going to use Memento on this. Anytime I'm painting, I stamp with memento. There we go. And then I'm going to take the stamp off and stick it to here for later. You get your hands dirty? Oh yeah, real dirty. <laughs> real, real dirty. That's fine. And then, um, when I paint this, well, I'm first I'm going to open up a new Stella, so that way those of you that don't use these will buy tons of them because they're the best thing ever. I use this on every card I make, um, every single time. I can't help myself. Sometimes I'll, like, go into it and I'll be like, this is a boy card. I'm not going to use Stella. And then I'll use Stella. My Father's Day card this year from my dad 
was painted entirely in Stella. <laughs> but it was the whiskey thing. Yeah, I used the whiskey set. Is, yeah. The whiskey is shiny, if you think about it. So when you get it, you're going to unscrew this. You'll pull off this little black ring. And then put this back on. Screw it all the way down. That will release all of your shimmer. So the way I painted this, I took the basic black Stampin' Right marker because gray was not in my theme. I wanted it to be black because I had on black jeans and a pink tank top and copper eyeshadow. So I only was using those colors. So I put a bunch of the black on this block so that way you can get lots of different shades of it. And then for the first time, there's going to be a lot of shimmer that comes out of this if you're like me so I do it next to it so that way I can use it with some other colors too there you go there's all of if you've never seen what this looks like by itself it's very very shimmery it's tons of little sparkles all in one so I started with the black on this one just kind of drawing it into the edge because I wanted to pick out which areas were black Make sure I get some gray, some black. I'll start with the little pumpkin. Get the stem kind of dark. And then all of the things that kind of look like, I think they look like eucalyptus leaves. I don't, don't you think so? Don't you think yeah. those look like little gum, yeah, gum, gum nuts. nuts? So I did all the eucalyptus leaves in black. And I make some of them darker and then I just paint until I run out of paint which just naturally makes a few of them lighter but when you first do them and you have a ton of shimmer all of them are just going to look like they're made of glitter and that is the best look make this one a little darker Then now that I've gotten some of the glitter off, I'm going to go back into the pumpkin. I'm going to do the lines a little darker, let them dry, and then come back in with another coat of the black. So that way it kind of has some definition. Get some more glitter in here. I also find that painting with this is really fun just because it's a little bit more watery so on small images like this the image itself isn't small but with all the small pieces it's easy to fill in all the little spots because it just kind of bubbles I'm going to do one more of these and then do some of the other colors. Just try and make these a little darker at the bottom. And just pull in I love that the, the leaves are that gray color because it's unexpected. Yeah. Like unexpected colors. I did this as a test run. That's why I did not originally film it when I was doing it. And then I was done and I was like, man, I wish I would have filmed that because I like how it turned out. Then I'm going to grab a ton of black to go through and do the stem. That way you can kind of tell where it goes. I've got a little extra black on here, so I'm going to go ahead and do this stem over here. There we go. Okay, then where did I put that baby wipe? And then I threw it in the trash. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> I'll wipe it on the side of the black. Get that extra. Actually, I can do it down here because I don't need that color right now. Then, for some of this, I use the Rococo Rose stamp pad and then the cinnamon because it looks the most coppery to me. And for part of it, I did cheat and use the cinnamon blends just because I wanted three different shades of brown. So, on here, I've got the dark blend, the light blend, and then an even lighter shade of, shade of cinnamon, which I got from blending the Stella with the ink pad. So that way I was still sticking to my one color theme. 
but with three shades of the same color. So I'm going to go in and do all the gum nuts in the dark blend. This is the dark blend, right? Yep. That way they kind of stand out. Your dark blend's not as dark as my dark blend. Oh, there we go. Now it is. I can always add a little black into them. I normally color with the brush tip, but when I was doing this, it was the first time I used the little tip, and I did it on accident, and I kind of liked it. So for these, I'm going to do it again, especially since they're so small. And he isn't as dark as mine. That's weird. Maybe, Maybe I colored them spin. twice. And then I also went ahead and went over the lines on the leaves, just so that way they've got that dimension. I don't know how everyone else colors with blends, but I always just trace the lines of the stamps. And then I figure that's good enough. Most of the time it looks fine. Then with the lighter blend, I'm going to go in and color the leaves. And then for my, oh, I did that leaf gray last time. That's fine. <laughs> I can paint gray over brown. It'll be something different. So for the pointy leaves, that way I've got lines in them. And this will be my medium shade of cinnamon. And then for the little wheat sticks, I would assume that's what they are. They look like wheat, don't you think? These guys? Yeah. They will be with the ink pad, so they're the lightest shade of cinnamon. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I never do them perfect. There we go. Then just squeeze in the middle of this. All of mine. Yours doesn't have it yet. Every ink pad I own has a bunch of glitter left in the lid. So pull some glitter off of here. I'm just going to make a really light shade of brown. And do these with it. So that way they are wispy and sparkly and all good things. I also don't do these very neatly just because I feel like naturally they're kind of a fuzzy plant. This would be a really pretty stamp set if you are going to any weddings. Yeah, I was thinking it would be a, a good fall wedding yeah. card because instead of the sentiments that come with it, you could easily just throw in a congratulations. Let me get some of these a little darker with some dots in here. It would actually make a very pretty wedding bouquet <laughs> if you were getting married in the yeah. winter. It looks like you a... could find these plants in these colors yeah. or just paint them. If you want to keep painting to the side where they can I see can you paint that. and me do move on to the next one, then we can do yep. two things at once. That's what you get well, when you, you get two people at the large same time. Stack of things that I have near me. Oops. Yeah, that'll be covered up. Right there. Thanks. I will. Okay, paint. so she can keep painting, and if you have a question, we'll try to keep looking at the yeah thing about what she's doing as she paints. But that way, you can see her paint and me do this next card. So on my website yesterday, I posted a couple of the the little list the little list of what it's not long, but some of the things they expect to go on back order. Um, let me switch to this view for just a second. Um, there are, I don't remember, maybe eight, ten things that they think that might go on back order, um, maybe even today. The Pied Papers one, um, not a whole lot of things that I've used other than the Pied Paper, which I know a lot of you wanted the Pied Paper, so make sure you get it today before it goes. It'll come back, but you might have to wait. Then the other things were the cups and the little carriers. So, I'm going to show you. These are the carriers. I'll show you how to make one. I'll put it together. I'm missing all the good stuff down here. I lost. I'm going to switch back over so you can see both. You don't really have to see. But these are great carriers, and they fit the coffee cups. So, let me get another camera. 
So they come flat. Um, and I can't remember. Let's see. You get eight of them in a package. So I wanted to do something. Like I said, if you were watching earlier, one of my um, friends, Peggy, asked if you could bake muffins in the cups. So I'm pretty sure you can bake them. I'm not sure if the, uh, their food, I mean, they're drink safe to, I think it was 300 degrees. We found out a lot about the cups, but nobody really knew whether or not you should be drinking out of them. So I wanted to do something where you could put muffins in them. Ah. There's a funny story to go with this. So here's our Halloween paper. And this paper this is the most gorgeous paper yeah, that's ever been created. It's creative. super, super pretty. I'm and I know with it. some of you are like, I don't do Halloween. Um, so you don't even look at that page. Well, for one, you're going to miss a ton of cute stuff on that page that doesn't have to be Halloween. And I'm going to show you a couple of things on it. But what I really like what they did with this year's Halloween paper is on most of the designs, you have one piece that if you don't use it at Halloween, you could use it any time. Yeah, or you could do a really day. elegant Halloween. It's the most elegant so on, Halloween. Like on this side, it's got bats, but this side, it's just roses. So pretty. And... My fingers are stuck. This is the piece I'm going to use. And I don't even, it's, I mean, it's not even pumpkins. It's more little flowers. But the color combination is beautiful. So we're going to use this piece now. Yeah. And then on the other side, it's spider webbish. But it's lace. But yeah, it's lace. That's lace. That's gorgeous. So, I mean, if you look really close, these right here are spider webs. But if you, you put something tell. on top of it when you stamp, nobody's ever even going to see that that's a spider web. So we're going to use that in a second. Here's in another color. I love all I think of it's it. it's Cajun. I love it so much. Some more bats. And they're lace. They're yeah, they're lace lacy bats. bats. I love that. So it gives you a great option if you are going to, if you want some Halloween, like this one's just stripes. But I know a lot of times we don't use up all of the Halloween. Now this one is super fun because look at it. It's all grungy and it's got the roses and the little tiny spider webs. I hoard Halloween paper. I have a problem. One of my girlfriends, her one of her favorite things is bite me. I think this would make a lovely bite me card because <laughs> it's roses and spider webs. You know, when you send it to your friends as a joke, and then it's just stripes on the other side, and then this one, nothing Halloween about that. Just some pretty peacock lace and some more Love roses. Flowers. So don't think I don't do Halloween and don't look at this paper because you'll be really sad. You'll like start that to could be, be a wedding card. Yeah, peacock side. It's and just then here's fanciness. Um, the checks on one side and the spiders on the other, because you'll start to see stuff and you'll be like, where'd they get that paper? And it's because it came from the Halloween set. And then all of the stuff that goes with it, super pretty. And I'm going to use a couple of them on this, this project. So to do these, they're, they fit together. You just fold them on the, the fold lines. Super easy. And the cup, the cups hold eight ounces. So they're larger cups. I know a lot of people were like, oh, I did those. I've done the mini cups before and I put in two Hershey Kisses. These would hold a stack of Hershey Kisses. So it would also be fun to make the same thing I'm going to show you and use two cups and then fill it with Halloween candy. So you'd have a little um, carrier for your Halloween candy. So it just fits like that. If You could add some adhesive here to get it to sit to make sure it doesn't fall apart, but it's... I mean, it's if you, like, go to the bakery and you get something. And these are food safe as well. So then I have this paper. I just cut it in two-inch strips. So I've already done one with this side that is more of a fall one. And then this one's just going to be straight Halloween. So I didn't want to waste any paper, so I just laid it on here. And then I kind of pinched it here it here pinch it here and then when you take it off you can fold them and just make sure those creases are nice and foldy but see on this you're not going to really be able to tell that it's a spider web except I want you to be able to tell so where's my seal plus the Seal Plus is a better option for this because it holds so su super strong. 
I hope I can get it. When you do it at this camera angle, it's never oh, easy. Oh, no, I couldn't get it earlier because I was doing it for <laughs> the camera. Because your arms are stretched out. So just add some to every panel. And then just go back over here. And just lay it in the middle. You could do it so it covered the whole thing, but you're... There's going to be craft showing on it at some point. And because this card stocks 12 by 12, by cutting the two inches, you get more pieces out of it. And I think that little border looks fine. Mm -hmm. So then just take another scrap piece, because every time's going to end up with a little scrap, and just lay them right here. And again, pinch that over. Flip that. And then this one I'll just cut. So it takes about one and a half strips of this to do a box. Just try to lay that on there so it's mostly matched up. And then just take your scissors on this last one and trim that. And then you have a super cute little box. And then to make, I wanted to make a little tag to hang on it. Get this folded in a little bit more. So I'm going to use the Celebration Labels dies. It's called Celebration Tidings. This is the set that is part of the plaid, but the plaid suite. So it goes with the plaid paper. I just bought the dies because I love them. Yeah, and I'm going to use this big die here. So they are designed to if you want to make fold over things for your bags, I don't need this giant thing. I probably could, and there's probably a way I could make the big tag with it, but I was doing this late last night, and so I'm like, yeah, this is gonna work just fine, just like this. So I have, um, I've taken the lacy spider web and the spider. I need a piece of white. Oh, here we go. And then this one, obviously the color scheme is gonna be super simple. Just gonna stamp. The spider web. And put that here. So even though again this is a spider web, if you put any kind of a tag or a saying or an embellishment right there all through the year, nobody's gonna know it's a spider web unless you've made it to be a spider web. So let's get the celebration label die. On my other one, the pumpkins I was able to go this way. This time I'm gonna go this way. I'll just run that through my machine. So there are these new there's plates in the catalog that work with this machine and will work with the new one. So if you are needing new plates, don't think that you have to buy the old ones to use. Just roll that through. And so if you want, then at this point you can fold it here or you can fold it here. You can see how they have the little fold lines. I'm just going to cut mine. And let me show you the biggest one. This is the biggest die that you get. So here's a card front. So it's bigger than a card front. And this is really nice for the bags that are in the, as part of the suite. It's huge. And then they layer down from that size all the way to this size here. We have so much stuff on the table. So I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to use this little thing here to be my guide. So it would actually give you two because if you were going to stamp this since it's photopolymer you can just come back over on this one then and stamp that. And then I'm going to take my spider. I wish there was a die for the spider. Stamp 
him on a little bit of scrap. He's not a scary spider. He's just a fun little spider. And I'm just going to trim him out. Actually, I was going to do two. And I just stamped one. I haven't made this yet. So, you know, it, it's in my head from yesterday. And I'm not going to trim him out perfect because I don't want his little legs to fall off. But just kind of around him. And then here are two of the other pieces of the Halloween suite in my friend Susan has made it a goal to use this ribbon on every card that she creates. It's so cool. Which I don't know that she'll do it on every card she creates, but it makes great snow. It make and you can color it. We colored it with our blends the other day. So it is like supposed to be spider webby, but it also so looks pretty. um very weddingy. It looks very snowy. It looks like loose chicken wire yeah she put it, it shape she put it on the card with the elf that said don't let your tinsel get in a, in a tangle because it looks like yeah. tinsel so I'm, again do, do don't we still have like a farm looking set because it would be cute yeah. over like a basket with like a chicken yeah. or an egg in it yeah it's really really pretty and again if you just skip the halloween page because you don't do halloween you're gonna miss that i'm just gonna put this on here And you can see it's going to make a really pretty bow for this. Just going to tie this up here. I will finish this off like all the way decorated with my tag attached. And post it on Facebook and on my website so you can see it over there. But look how fun that is. It's a super fun, wispy, light bow. It's almost as fun as my tool. And you could do tool and this. You could color some of this black. And then for our little tag here, I'm going to put this on here so it hangs. And again, I will do that and I'll post it on my uh, blog for you to see the finished one. And then these are the iridescent pearls. Again, part of the Halloween suite. I, love them. I bought those immediately. Beautiful colors. They're black based, but they're iridescent. They also have black glitter paper on that page yes. that goes with it. And the black glitter paper would be pretty with this. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to take one of these. You could do black glitter paper in a two inch and then a one inch or one and a half of the pattern yeah, that would over be pretty. top of it. These would be fun. Um, these guys are thinking about having a Halloween party. This paper, these accessories, this little stamp. It would make a great invitation. Yes, it would. Uh, and I used up all those dimensionals. So, more? no, it's fine. I'll finish it later. So just, later. you could put this on with a dimensional. And then I'm going to hang the tag from here. So for this one, you could do either muffins or candy. Or it would be fun if you were having a party. Like to do one side candy in a cup and the other side print the invitation and kind of swirl it up and stick it in the cup because that way you would have some cups to use as well. So this is this one. Then let me show you what I did to the same because I used this piece of paper the other direction. And then for my friend Peggy who wants to bake muffins in them, I got these from Amazon. So they're just the little muffin cups. I colored this tag. This is on shimmer paper. I'll do a full tutorial on this one and post it on YouTube. So it's just on the white shimmer. It's going to have to be double mounted onto something else because that shows through and you don't want your tag to look like that. Um, but look how pretty that is. So it matches the paper and it's shimmery. It's hard to tell because of the light, but because it's shimmer paper, that's shimmery. So here's my box, and I used, this ribbon is also in the catalog. It is the embroidered ribbon. This is the catalog where I feel like all of the names they came up with 
were just kind of um, just what they are. So you can see these are the little paper cups and they just fit right in here. And then let me show you how to finish them off after you baked it. I have to go get them because you know, if you watch me, you know my cat hop on the table. So these had to be someplace where the cats won't hop. This, I was making these last night and my husband said, are these for dinner or for dessert? Now, to be honest, if I was making this, I would put pumpkin muffins in them, but it's August. It's August 4th. It's actually my dad's birthday. He turns 80 today and he still works full time. So he's a young 80. So my husband said, are these for dessert or for dinner? And I said, they are a prop because these are um, zucchini cheese muffins because I didn't want to make pumpkin muffins in August. So you just take these out. And then these are our, so the only thing I'm using on this project that you can't get from Stampin' Up! is the actual muffins. So these are our six by eight cello bags. And they fit just perfect for this size. And then when Carissa got here, she said, can I have one of those muffins? They look delicious. <laughs> so nobody was happy that they were frosts. They make a great, very professional looking muffin. This is a, this recipe is delicious. And you know, I wanted zucchini muffins in August, not pumpkin. Can you hand my twine? I laid it over there. Which one? Just the, just the plain old twine. It's in the bottom of. <laughs> so much stuff on the items. table so for this I'm just going to use just our basic twine and then just tie the top but think how cute these would be um, with the pumpkin thing in it with this design or you could get the lemon stamp and make some lemon poppy seed muffins or we have a bunch of stuff that once you start thinking about it so it looks like you just went to the bakery and we did go to the bakery on Friday when we did our little zoo trip and we bought muffins that were delicious. They were blueberry. You could do blueberry in this blueberry lemon, but we paid $6 for, um, two muffins. So my muffins don't cost $6 for two. He said I could eat them. Well, you're not going to eat them right now. Go get your hands dirty. I don't mind. They look delicious. So then I have this that I've covered. I'll add my little tag and again when I do the full tutorial then I'll have it all the way finished because I'm going to hang this on here and then these fit. You kind of just bend those edges down and you stick these in here. And how incredibly sweet is this? So again, if you think, well, I'm, I'm not going to give anybody any kind of a drink thing, and this will be cuter when it's hanging up here, because uh, I'll make a little top bow for it. But just because you don't drink coffee or you don't think you'll give anybody kind of a coffee drink, don't overlook these. So I'll dangle that from there. But like I said, this was, I was doing this last night at about eight o'clock and I still had to bake the muffins and we hadn't had dinner. So I'm pretty sure that's why when I started baking muffins at eight o'clock at night, my husband thought they were for dinner. He can have one today. So that's that. How fun is that? Now this is painted. Yep. Now you can go over and finish yours. It was definitely a little faster not watching TV and doing it. I also stopped in the middle to make dinner, I think. So this is finally done. I'll hold it up so you guys can see it. We've got... Also, I always paint off on the edge like this because... I think one day I'll end up using all those scraps. I haven't yet, but I think they're pretty because they're shimmery. So you should run now one you with the pumpkin dye. Will the pumpkin dye fit on it? Is a sparkly pumpkin? Maybe. It would also be pretty with a. Can I have the big shot, please? So for this, I have. I will share the recipe, and I will also put the link for where I got the muffin cups on my blog when I do the the YouTube post. I'll put the recipe link down in 
this when we're done. With I the debated plot. which order I wanted the card colors in for a long time, but I think um, there is this border die in there, and I think this border die shows up better on black. So that is why I did a black card base. And we have people watching from the Netherlands. Chris Ooh. has been to the Netherlands. Yeah. I've been. I've been to. Well, I went to Holland for a weekend. Um, but she stayed for a while when she studied in Spain. One of her friends is from there. Yeah. We have somebody watching from England. I lived in Scotland for a couple of years. I lost my dice. They're in my pile of stuff. Oh. oh, here's my pile of stuff. <laughs> so we have people watching from all over. Thanks, guys. Here we go. Autumn Essentials. That is these. So this actually comes with a lot of dice. Um, it's got the ones to make different pumpkin shapes to add the lines to your pumpkins. And then two different border dies. And then all of these little, like, wheat dies that I'm going to be using. But I used this border die. Because I thought it was the coolest. Where is your washi tape? For sticky, yeah. I always, when anytime I use machine, that border dies, plate, I'm so looking forward to the magnetic plate because I wasn't a fan of the one that comes with this. I use the magnetic plate at home, but anytime I do border dies just so they're straight, I washi tape them down for good measure. I just want to make sure that they are staying. And the top one. There we go. I'll start with that. I thought about running this through an embossing folder as well. I did it for a long time when I made the card, but since so much of the front gets covered up, I decided I could live without it. So we're gonna have a whole bunch of little thingies everywhere. I'm going to leave that till I clean it out and get the rest of them off. Okay, then we're going to cut out. It's, it's dry enough. Usually I let it dry a little bit before I cut it out, but it is good enough for now. Then I did not line it up very well the last time. So I'm going to try a little harder this time. I was not paying enough attention. Let's get a little closer. I love that these cut these out so well, but I also don't love how long it takes for me to line them up because I struggle with these. And then I always have crooked borders. And I think that's pretty close. We'll call it good enough. Can you cut me a strip of this? Which ones are you cutting? Those three. But they don't have to be perfect. I just need the edges of them. Oh, that's much better than the last time I did it. Okay. Outside. Still not 100% perfect, but a lot closer. So that's what that looks like now. And then the Is that last big enough? thing. Oh, I did like nine of them. Oh. That's why I ran out of copper paper and told you I needed one. The last thing is Nothing going like to be... Nothing like having to stamp at your mom's house. And, and using all um, her stuff. Using her stuff. Although I will say that if... Those of you know, who know Sarah, the president of Stampin' Up, she did an Instagram live the other night when her daughter was at her house and she was ordering. So nothing like the president of the company and you're ordering stuff because she had to have stuff from the holiday catalog. But the very fa my favorite, my favorite was when she asked if she had the end colors. Yeah, she, she asked like, her mom of course if she I had would the have the end colors. colors. So that was fun. I sent it to Chris because I'm like, yeah, this feels a little familiar. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then for this, I'm not going to do as many right now just because it'll take a while, but I did cut out a ton of these just because I love 
the extra flair that the foil paper. Oh, is your team leader? Did her daughter speak at on stage a couple of um, years ago? Maybe like in Orlando. I know that somebody from I don't remember if she was from the Netherlands, but I remember that somebody. That's a comment on YouTube. I'm trying to lean over her and see. Sorry. Comments on both sides. But my glasses don't work. I don't use work. the whole stem, especially since it gets covered up. So I just try and mostly get the leafy parts on. So I can get as many out of the paper as possible. But I just want to see that they're just doing their job. And it is nice that these don't have to be perfect. They just make it fun. If you want to adhere this to the card back, sure. Where's just the regular seal? It is I see it. It's back there. Way back yonder. So if you don't have these yet, you're missing. Because let me show you on this one. So if you get this on here, and how many of us have like stuck something on and we're like, oh, and like it's all stuck and we're like, that is not where I wanted that. With this regular seal, you have, I think, about five minutes where it just pulls up. Because anything else, you can't do that on the Steel Plus. It will rip your card because it's pretty permanent. But it's great for, like, the boxes and sticking ribbon on. But the seal is repositionable until it's all the way set. Because I know we've all stuck something crooked on a card before. I use that feature a lot because I do all of my cards crooked. <laughs> Not intentionally. But it does happen. I'm just going to do six for now, and then I'll finish it off later. And then these. I do like how many dies this came with, because some of the dies that I've gotten recently, I'm like, there's like three dies in here. But this one had a lot of fun ones. I like the pumpkin. Yeah, I like that it also gives you the lines. I want to do a card where I do like stuff in vanilla or shimmer and then do shimmer lines on the pumpkin. Okay, scooch this down to you. Then when I do these, I always stick all of this fun stuff to this. Also, I cut a black border on this one. I'm not going to do that because it takes forever. So if you want a black border, <laughs> you can, you know how to cut. So then you could run the die through. Yeah, but then there'd be a gap. Not much. You could fix yeah, it. I thought about it. Maybe next time or when I finish this up later. I do like it with the black. Okay, fine. We'll do a black border. <laughs> do you have a piece of black paper handy? Uh, where's your die? Right here. So I thought about doing that, but then I didn't want to deal with it. It makes it super striking. Yeah. I will stamp my sentiment while we wait. So I just did Rococo Rose on the Rococo Rose because I like that it's not really the focal point of the card, but it is there. I also have lost the stamps now. That is not them. Have you seen the stamp set? Okay, it has to be on there. No, I had the dirty stamp on top. The one that got my hands all messy. So I moved it. It's right here. Oh, there I'll we cut go. That I'll cut this out. We'll do a, a cheat border. The quick I and like easy cheat way. borders because I like quick and easy. I do quick and easy when I'm doing videos for other people. When it's just me messing around, I tend to take a longer amount of time on my card. Okay. And then it has a couple different sayings. I liked the font on the Hello Friend, but you could also stick on the Autumn Greetings. I mostly picked the Hello There Friend because it fit in the amount of space that I had because I stuck this on the card thinking I wasn't going to do a sentiment, but then it kind of needed one. I need a block. It's sparkly because you've got shimmer paint on my, um... Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> oh, my God. My... Everything's going to be shimmery now. It's, it's on yeah, the plate. Yeah, everything in my craft room is sparkly because of... Where is it? Oh, sorry. Okay. Hello, 
there, friend. There we go. Okay. Now we have our cheap order. It's going to go this way, I think. I need stamp and seal. Stick on one half at a time. <laughs> I'm getting text. You can probably hear it, but it's when you need both your iPad and your iPhone to make this work, there's no way for me to turn it off. It doesn't line up very well. It'll be good enough. I don't think I like it. It's going to look beautiful. No, it won't. And if you're, your choice is cutting it all out or doing that. Yeah, I'll cut it out. I like how it looks cut out. See, it's just it not looks the fine. same. Now just stick your, your copper things where the it's missing. I will, but it's not the same. So then when I do these, I lay hi, them Deborah, on hi, Michelle. the table first. So what? Three. I had nine last time, so I'll do three and three for now. On the two corners I want them on. Make sure. That's another good feature of the seal is that I've been like sticking it on the back of here and I line stuff up and then you can move it. I always do all mine with dimensionals. I adhere everything with dimensionals. So that should fit on the card just fine. So then I'm going to take these. If there is anything in the catalog, the holiday catalog that you want to see, any embellishments or papers or ribbons, I have most of them. I have some of it too with um, me. So comment and then when I'm done with my next card, we'll get that stuff out and show you whatever it is that you want to see. Okay. Maybe that about here. Then I'm just going to stick these in. Looks a little better when it's fuller, but it is fine for now. Then make sure they're all Here, I'll under. run a couple more for you. How That's many fine. more do you need? I think I did like... 10 on the last card. This one's got six. There's another one of them. I do like that it comes with three different ones. One that's by itself, one with one branch, and one with two, just because it made it faster um, to do everything because you can roll out three at a time. And find the nearest dimensional, stick them to it. I love that all of our new dies, they always come out so easy. I know. That's so nice. Okay. And these I'm just going to do with some seal. The new Stampin' Up! website went live today. So if you go to order from either of us, you will see the, the new one. So it does have a fun feature that's a wish list. And you can make a wish list and send it to those who buy you gifts. And that way it'll be super easy because all they'll have to do is click on all the little links. It's kind of like a registry for stamp stuff. How, how fun is that? So, you know, instead of getting something for Christmas that you don't want or for your birthday or Mother's Day you can get something that is on, actually on your wish list so that's one of the new features it also has a um, for one it just looks like it's from this century and not last because <laughs> the other one was from last century so when I right before I started hooking everything up to go live I checked and it was live so hopefully it doesn't have any problems it's today. not too far off from the last one so here it is 
I think the extra ones did help a little bit. Let me just scoop this one over. Pull that out, put it back in. So which one is the one you did today? This one. You can't hardly tell that the black is not. Yeah, but it's not an even border. It's, it's it better. It still offsets everything. Yes. You know, it's a mother-daughter um. I have preference. my preferences. I would rather save time. She would rather make it look beautiful. Super pretty. How pretty is that? I love it. Might be my new favorite color combination. I also colored this one today a little bit differently. So, can't. There we go. Now they're. No, but they're both in there. If you can kind of see. Also, I didn't say this because you were making a card. When I paint large flowers like this, some people just do them one color. If I'm painting with the Stella, I do each petal individually and grab different amounts of ink from inside the lid so that way your flower looks more like a flower because they're not all just one color that's why i like painting over using the blends because the blends would make them more one color beautiful thank you so you want to do another one or you want me to go you can go okay so for this one i'm going to do the nativity and you've seen the one what I eat muffin. she wants to eat a muffin for those of you that were at the stampin up um thing I don't know it's probably been three or four years ago Shelly and Sarah did a muffin thing and Sarah insisted on eating the muffin so you know in that case Sarah becomes the child <laughs> and it wasn't it was a cupcake it was old you can eat a muffin but just don't chew on camera I won't. <laughs> so for this one I'm gonna use let me scoot back over in the middle since she's not sitting here right now I'm this is the paper that comes with uh our Heartfelt Greetings Sweet, I think is what it's called. It is um, the one that goes with the, the mugs. So I'm a real huge fan of mixing everything together. And then when I do my try it classes, I keep everything together in sweets, which is very rare for me. I don't do that. So that's one of the reasons I like putting my try it class together. Is because it forces me to do some stuff that I don't normally do. So here's Old Olive. And then here's the one side and here's the other. And this might not be the paper that you would normally go to when you're doing a nativity card. But I just wanted it to be kind of traditional Christmas. So this is cut 4 by 6 because it's 12 by 12 paper. So I'm just going to stick this in here and take a little, a little bit off the bottom. You don't have to measure, just get some off the bottom. And then that gives me this little piece here that I can flip over and put here. Are the muffins good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they might need butter. No. No. They're cheesy zucchini, so, and it calls for sour cream. I make them with yogurt. And you can put onions in them. I did not put any onions in it. But it does make it a little bit more savory. So here's this. And then for this one, I'm going to use the dies that go with the nativity. I'm not actually going to use the nativity stamp. And this is our brass paper, which was new to the annual catalog. So I'm going to take the stable, the palm trees, the Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, a sheep, a donkey, a star, and another palm tree. these two. Here's my time saving thing as opposed to not. If I can get them all on one sheet of paper for one pass through, that's what I'm going to do. So this one here. This stable comes out with the wood. It's really pretty. So now we have all of our pieces. Look how pretty the stable is. Can you see the, it's got the wood grain already in it. So then I'm going to take the star also comes embossed. So these two I can just leave as is. Then we've got the sheep 
And this is our textile folder that's from the annual catalog. I'm going to throw them all in here. But not all. Like I'm going to do one tree. Uh, maybe I'll do all of them. So just lay these in here. They don't have to go any certain direction. Are you going to need the big shot again? Oh, you weren't going to show your, you're just showing your menagerie? She is like over there majorly um, sucking down the, that muffin. <laughs> I didn't need breakfast. <laughs> so she can't really talk. I can, I can do that. So here's once we've sent them through. This would be a nice card if you have to make multiple Christmas cards because it goes pretty fast. stick this part together. First I'm going to use just the seal <clears throat> and I'm going to put a little strip down here where I cut these two apart. And then just line it up and because it's the seal if I make this too big for the card I can move it. Nope we're good. And then I'm going to use something that doesn't go with the sweet because you know I'm a mixer. It uh, maybe it does go with the, I don't know where it comes from. This, But it's red, red braided linen trim. So to get it to hold, I'm going to put just a tiny piece here. Just hold that there. I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to fold most of it on the back. Oops. That was a tiny piece. Pop this here. I'm going to fold these around here. Like that. So now they're stuck in that. I wanted ribbon on the card, but I didn't want to overwhelm the nativity scene. I should have stuck the um, sticker adhesive on the back of these, I forgot. So now before you stick this down, but again, because you're using the seal, you can kind of mess with it. Just kind of layer this where you want it to go. I know my palm trees are going to go up here in the top. See, it would have been easier to have my sticker stuff on it. But I forgot. Because there's so much stuff on the table, I can't see what I'm supposed to be using. But this will hold it. And then I'm going to work down. So I want this to just cover up the edges of those so they're not kind of blowing around. So stick that there. And this I want to have a little bit of dimension to it. And then these are going to help hold the this on. My little animals. And I know that there's, I mean, these are meant to cut the stamps out and not be silhouettes. But everybody knows what comes at the manger scene. So you, you know that it is a sheep and a donkey. It's more just a silhouette. Same with this. You know you know what it's supposed to be, so you don't have to worry about the fact that it's not a perfect silhouette. Just stick these on here. And then to get it to have a little bit of this bend, I'm going to bend it right there in the middle. And when I stick it on, I'm going to kind of push those in so it just keeps that raised up right there. Can you see how it's raised up? And then just add my star here. And then you have a really simple traditional looking 
Christmas card. It would also be pretty if you did the champagne or the silver paper in the cardstock in the paper that was returning. The frosted, what was that one called? Yeah. Frosted foliage or something. Mm -hmm. The one that has all of the shades of purple and I still have things. It. Yeah, I have some too. I haven't used any of the returning anythings because who wants something that's returning when we have lots of um, new stuff? I know, Carol, isn't this nativity beautiful? Is my other card over there with it? The nativity card? Where'd you put that stack of cards? Over here. So here is just the dies. It does come with words. The set. I have the set. Here's the set. What? Yeah. So here's the actual set. So here's the dies, and here's the dies when I stamped them and then colored them. So you can see they're all a little bit bigger because of the thing, but... I mean, everybody knows what that is, so you don't have to worry about that. It's really just the animals that are a little bit on the large side, but I was okay with it because I wanted them to balance out my card. So that's that. That's the last thing we're stamping for you today, but she is going to show you the menagerie. What's it called? Menagerie. No, but the first word. Isn't there two Mixed words? Up. Mixed up menagerie. There we go. I have to get my dog to go. Why? I have to go under the table to get stuff. They won't see you. She's now eating her breakfast. One entire muffin. I'm pretty sure that that's, those giant cups are two muffins. So she smashed that. That was not two muffins. Yes, it was. It has a whole vegetables recipe. It does it. have recipe vegetables. It has vegetables and dairy. Because it's got cheese and yogurt. Delicious. So it's kind of your lunch. And you know what would be good in them? What? Bacon. Or just cut it in half and put bacon in it like a sandwich. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So this, the menagerie mix-up, right there. This it has a bajillion little animal pieces, and it's stuffed with a paper towel <laughs> in which I have written <laughs> all of the animals I think I can make with it. That is why I was doing it. In was bulk. it on a paper towel because you were doing it at work? Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was doing this at work. That's why there's also a block in here. I can't close it now. So, you know, one thing, because she works in retail and she's a manager, but you can't have lunch with people anymore in the lunchroom because of COVID. Yep. So when you're forced to be by yourself, then you can stamp because yep. nobody's interrupting your stamp I take time. my stamps to lunch with me. And then these are all of the dies. So they cut out... All of these little pieces, um, which I have in my handy dandy stamp case that I have a million of, started cutting out a bunch of the little pieces. So I have some of the heads, a couple of little bodies. If you flip it, we can put together someone. Okay. And we were talking about how much fun this would be to give to kids like a whole little kit so they could make their animals. How cute would it be to do it in the carrier? Yeah. Like put the pieces in the in cups. Cup. Yeah, and yeah. make the things match. Oops, I thought I switched Let's this. Let's see. Where are some? Here are some few. I've got a bunch of, I also have scraps of DFP in here. And a little whale that I cut out. And a baby whale I cut out. So I'm going to grab, let's see. There's two bodies that come with it. We've got these two little ones. Um, and there's also two head shapes. So we've got this one and this one. But I think you can also get some different animal vibes if you flip this one upside down. So I say let's make a sheep because here's some sheep hair. I feel like sheep heads are bigger at the top, smaller at the bottom. So we're going to have them go that direction. This one, let's see. These look like they could be like little bear ears or something. We'll have them on home. Oh, it would be cute to give them with kids um, hot cocoa and marshmallows. Oh, yeah. Like, you could do the cocoa mix and marshmallows on in the side. one side and a whole little thing of yeah. animal pieces in the other. Let's see. I need another body. Actually, I don't think I've cut out any ears that would really go with him. I started. Here's a body. Um... So do you color them after you put them together? I was planning on it, yeah. You can also, like, this has 
the stamps for the noses and the faces I was going to do with after. I feel like this looks like a cat, but I haven't, I stamped cat ears. I haven't cut them out yet. I'll just hand cut them. Okay. I will fussy cut some stamp ears because, um, now if you can see where I've moved I the die start, cut see, machine. I cut right here. <laughs> so, oh, you can't see it yet. This way. I did, I did start to cut out the ears. I just didn't finish. I can hand you the die. It's fine because now I've got my drink and everything sitting okay. in there. So then I just, when I did the bunny originally, did the tiniest amount of seal along the edge. I mean, if you're giving it to a kid, you could just give them a glue stick because yeah. they don't care. Stick the little head on. Do I have a better one? There we go. This one was cut a little crooked. Then I'm going to do a little edge along here. Actually, if it's little girls like you were, you could have just given them scissors, too. Yeah. Because you would have liked to have cut all this stuff out. That's why I still cut stuff out. Once given the opportunity. Or if it's somebody that, like a little girl that's, a you know, 12, 13, how much fun would this be for Christmas to give them this, the dies, and then do tiny little the, die cut yeah. machine, the little mini machine? Because it looks kid size. You would have died that. for that, yeah. I would have she used that. to always get stamping up stuff for Christmas. This is how I ended up here. So here we go. We've got a little sheep. We can give him a little sheep face in a minute. And then we'll do a little bear. Are you going to need blocks for your faces? Um, yes. Yes, I will. Because, <laughs> you know, I've moved everything off the table to make us fit. Oh, and another thing before I get the block. While I'm thinking of it. Another thing that's on the thing that might go on back order soon is this ribbon, which is from the fall set. It's gorgeous. I have it. So pretty. I'm going to go a little ahead. Then I'm going to do the adhesive on the back. I like that when the dies, so on all of the sets of ears, the dies cut out like a little U shape. I can't pick this up. There we go. So that way, when you're doing your adhesive, you do it back here and it tucks behind the little head, which is very convenient. There's our little That's bear. That's super cute. And then we'll make ourselves a little cat, or I guess it could even be like a fox if you want to color it that way. Out ahead, give them a little tail. Yeah, there are tons of dyes in there, yeah, which is why I really that's why I wanted. And it. this little flower thing right here is really mm -hmm. cute, but I like the way it does cuts out the eyes. Can it, you see that the eyes and the nose? Yeah, like if you want to do the whole thing die cut, it is definitely possible. It would be a fabulous Christmas gift for some uh, little any kid. Probably from I would say like. You would have been able to do it probably around eight. Um, I'd give myself sooner than that. No. <laughs> I had. It's kind of fiddly skills. for That's less true. than. It's really small. Yeah. I need some fine motor skills. But definitely like 10, 11, 12. Oh, yeah. I was room mom, of course, all the time when she was in elementary school. And there was nothing the little boys liked better from first grade on than when I brought the embossing gun. Because, you know, it was tools and art time. Yep. And they all wanted to emboss on their own with the heat gun. Okay, let's see. Give them some little faces. I'll scoop them over here. They're super easy once you get... That's why I was cutting pieces in bulk. Was because I just wanted to be able to assemble them and not have to stamp and cut them every time. I think it went well. Yeah. There's all my stuff again. I did it because all of my stamps were dirty because I was stamping all of these. Okay, I want the sheep to have. I'm gonna close this so I can pick. Hmm. I feel like this is a sheep face. Where's that one right here? This can be a sheep face. There's a pig nose and a an beaver tail. Oh, I, know. I can't wait to do the beaver. And it's got little beaver teeth. Where the moment? There's one. Oh, stamp pads. Oh, the other one's over there. So now that you can see the inside of the catalog, let me find this one in here. So, here's the 
here's the the cards that they've done with it. So they have a little reindeer, a bear, a polar bear maybe, a fox. These ones right here are super cute but because they yeah, didn't even the use the bodies. Hands. I've got to do and that. Here's a so. sheep. That's the face they use. Is that what you used? No, they no. did the cutout one. Oh, yeah, that's with a cutout the cutout one. And what's this? The, I can't see your tilt A reindeer? It looks like maybe a dog. I don't know. It's it a happy a dog. Hanukkah card. And then here's a little cow. Okay, I think I want my bear. And it's one of those sets because sometimes they do this. That's that's not good for me because it makes it look like you're getting a teensy tiny little set. This is um, full size, and so then all of these, of course, are full size, but they just show it small. He needs some little eyeballs, which I think that stamp would also make a really nice cow nose. I was thinking that last time. Where's the little mouth that I want? I want him to have this one with the smile. I just thought these were so cute. This was the first thing as soon as I saw it. And I was like, yep, I'm buying that. First thing I want. This is what I had overnighted. And since they're photopolymer, they're super easy to line up. And all it would really take if you were giving it as a gift is just a black stamp pad because you can yeah. color. I mean, everything is going to be colored in. And the one thing they did not add was cat eyes, which is kind of sad because cats have very specific eyes. So this cat is going to get these eyes. You could always draw them. Yeah, but I can't draw. Are there whiskers? Yes, on the bunny. That's what you use the marker. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Where did I put it? There it is. I think if you just don't color that you thing. Yeah, I just want the whiskers. Because you can still get the nose. nose and the mouth. And the mouth. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. And then we have a cat. Perfect. Here we go. It worked. So there's our little friends. I think they're even cute in black and white, but I definitely will color them. So um, she'll have some finished cards on her YouTube too. If you um, are watching on my or Facebook blog. page, yeah, I will um, put a link down there for you to see when she gets her stuff finished. So that's, that's what we so have cute. for you today. If you um, have any questions, you can ask on either one of our pages. And remember, we both have specials today. So if you're placing... An order mine goes through the. You trying to find this? Yes. I thought it was this one. It is. You're not hitting oh, it. There, there we go. go. Um, so we both have specials. So go to our mine will be Facebook posted later. Pages or our website or wherever. Mine go through the eighth. My catalog kickoff specials. Normally I just do it for a day or two, but because of the whole um, new shopping site. I was a little like, mm. <laughs> Maybe not. so hopefully they're not having any um, problems. Issues, yeah. So, mm -hmm. if you have any questions, just let us know, yeah. and we'll be back again sometime to show you some more. But most yeah. of this stuff will find its way. I'm not going to do the nativity card again. If you want to see that, you can watch it on here. Um, but she has that to finish up, and then I will do a full tutorial with the the muffin things, and you can see the first two ones of my trees on youtube already i probably won't do the flower one again as a video <laughs> because it takes so long but i will put it up on the blog with what i used yeah and all and as of today none of our links work until we go in and fix them all because any link those. that you put up now doesn't go to the product it just goes to the store so that's I was hoping the weather would be nice so I can go sit by the pool. At least if you're going to do some yeah. menial task like updating links, you can sit outside by the pool. Have some fun. So I think that's all yeah. we have for you today. So, I think so thanks for watching and go place your orders. Yeah. Bye. Bye. I'll I'll turn it off. I gotta take yeah. the mouse.